Hello everybody, Brian here from work to game and in this video we're going to be going over getting started with Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3. All three classic games have been released on the Nintendo Switch and feature upgraded graphics complete with widescreen, which is fantastic. We'll be sure to put out our full review for these games later, so be on the look for those. Now, I just wanted to share with you what you need to know when getting started with these classic games and hope that you have an amazing experience, because I truly love the Dragon Quest series and uh, hopefully that comes across with that. But there's some things that I really feel like you should know, so let's go ahead and get started. Dragon Quest is as old school as they come, so be sure to save and save often. One of the great things about these new versions, both 1, 2, and 3, is under the miscellaneous menu, you have quick save, in which that you can save your game and you can return to it at any time. This is very handy due to the portable nature of the Switch, but you can also save by going and talking to a king, and sometimes priests or nuns will allow you to save to the official game register. This will allow you to also kind of exit the game. Now, exiting the game was more important on the NES days in which that you had to do something special in order to make sure that you didn't override your file. But beyond that, save and save often. Do not be afraid to save. It's very important. You'll find yourself in situations where you wish you had and it can be rather stressful. Now this applies to all three games as well, so be sure to equip your items. You can go into the miscellaneous and equip menu and you'll cycle through everything that is available to, for you to equip. However, once you do acquire a weapon or a piece of gear, it's not going to auto equip. When you purchase it from a vendor, they will give you the option to say equip it now, so keep that in mind. But when you start these games, check to make sure your weapons are equipped, otherwise you might find yourself in a world of hurt when you're going out battling for the first time. It's important that you remember that you to talk to everybody in these games. You'll see a nice little exclamation mark over the head when you're facing them. So you can press A and you can talk to them. It's important to do that. Also, if you die, you can end up losing half your gold in that case. So just keep that in mind. You might want to store gold if you're going to be a little bit risky and try to push it a little bit further. Also, talk to the vendors in the game and make sure you rest up at ends. This is really important because this is going to help you heal, <laughs> especially as you continue uh, so on and so forth. This is very normal to a JRPG. So if you've been playing those, this should feel obviously known and you know up front. But if you're new and you never played these kind of games before, make sure you rest up at ends. Make sure you save, save often. Talk to everybody in town, even if they look weird. Just go talk to them. From a battling perspective, make sure that you know that the spells sleep and like a buff spell or a protect spell they're really potent. They're really going to help you out and they can turn the tide of battle, especially against the undead. So keep that in mind. Now get ready to grind because you're going to be leveling up. And especially like in Dragon Quest 1, it's just you. You're going to be solo. In Dragon Quest 2, you're going to be able to get a party. This is the first time that was introduced. And in Dragon Quest 3, you actually get to build your own party. And we'll go through that here in a little bit. So in Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, I want to talk to you about the terrain. Right now you can see a forest, you can see mountains, you can see plains, but you can also see a bridge. This is to help communicate various things. Obviously the more dense the map, the more likely your encounters are going to be mountains being the highest encounter rate that you'll see. Plains being least likely to have these random encounter battles. Bridges tend to represent that things are about to get even more challenging. As you go further and further away from town, you're going to see more and more battles from that perspective. So you have to prepare, take medical herbs to heal yourself, make sure that you equip plenty of gear. You're gonna do a lot of grinding, like I say, uh, not just for experience, but for gold, because your gear is really gonna be very important, especially in Dragon Quest two and three, where you're outfitting an entire party as opposed to one, where you just have to worry about your one Dragon Quester <laughs> in this case. Now, as far as Dragon Quest one goes, I just wanna highlight that they've improved it over the original NES is that in the NES version, you have to click on the stairs and say, I want to use the stairs. Now that is automatic and it's very nice to be a handy little trigger. But I do want to point out the idea of items here. And you'll see I have an item of a torch. This is a one use item and it will create light in a dungeon. So don't venture forth without at least a couple of torches just in case you find yourself in a dark space. And they do exist in Dragon Quest 1. So be sure to take a torch with you. You're welcome. And finally, for Dragon Quest III, one of my favorite Dragon Quest games as a kid, you have a system of building out your own party when venturing forth. And you do this right at the start of the game. After you talk to the king, he's going to tell you, 
go form up a party. You're going to go into this building right here, and then you're going to go up to this counter right here. You also have a bank, just like before, like if you die, you're going to lose your money, so you can store your, <laughs> your hard-earned gill or gold, excuse me, in this case. But talk to this person for Patty's Party <laughs> Planning Service, and you can pick up, drop off, and view register. Now, there are a couple characters already created for you, and they're going to kind of tell you about their personality uh, as well as their class. You can see Warrior, Priest, and mage are available and you can see their stats and you can see what they have equipped currently they all start off at level one but if you want to start your own uh character like i've done right here with this little mage you can go up to the second floor and you can talk to this guy right here and then he's going to give you a list of options of what classes to select warrior martial artist mage priest merchant gadabout which essentially i think used to be uh fool is what it was called back in dragon warrior three and thief so i want to make a note about priest and mage though because later there's going to be a quest that's going to allow you to turn these into a sage a sage having both the qualities of a mage and the qualities of a priest so keep that in mind but the sage will start back over at level one that is a while away in the game you're going to spend a good amount of time before you get to that option but note that it is available for you in case you want to plan accordingly however priest being your healer mage being a caster it's all well and good, but they can always do damage and you can always equip them out as well. I'm gonna select priest, and then what's gonna happen is that you're going to sit here and say, I can do it myself or I can leave it up to you. You get five seeds to kind of augment their stats accordingly. So I'm gonna say, I will leave it up to you in this case. Uh, and so that's gonna be uh, him going and selecting the various seeds. You have strength, agility, resilience, wisdom, and luck. So that's essentially what's going to drive their stats, allowing you to customize them. A little bit more and they're going to say all done and then you can say yes i do want that character to be registered and then from here you head back downstairs and talk to patty and in this case i'm picking up maddie so now with elroy with maddie and with julie i am ready to venture forth with my party of heroes you can have a party up to four people which is fantastic and again you can go and create any other characters and you can level up multiple characters with this game the one thing that will be consistent is you the hero in this case play around with it there's a lot of things you can do in all of these games these are really brilliant games can't praise them enough again we'll put out a full review later visually we can talk about how it is obviously different from its nes perspective but i do love the fact that it is widescreen it is truly great get out there get to grinding, and I hope you have a really good experience with it. Let me know what you end up thinking in the comments below. If you have any questions that we can answer for you, let us know in the comments below. And if for some reason we don't get to your answer, be sure to hit us up on Twitter or on Discord. We're here to hopefully help make your gaming experiences ultimately better. And I'm, I'm just a fan of this, of this whole series. Dragon Quest XI is also out now, but there's a whole different kind of connection with that. And we have a video on the channel about that. So if you're looking for more Dragon Quest and Dragon Quest experiences from us, let us know. But also check out our Dragon Quest playlist here at work to game Like I said, my name is Brian. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching this guide, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.